Hello. Well, I can't believe it's a month since I posted a video. Um, it makes one admire those uh, YouTubers who post one every week reliably. Um, I've been working on a uh, new servo for the rudder of our robot boat Woodstock. Um, I made one right at the beginning of the project using a stepper motor like this which has got an, an epicyclic uh, reduction gear in it. The problem was I underestimated the amount of force that the sea can exert on the rudder and uh, the result was that uh, my software lost uh, track of where the uh, rudder was actually pointing. So I decided, uh, well, Dick solved that problem by uh, procuring a linear actuator, which is what we're using in Woodstock at the moment for our experimental work. The problem with the linear actuator is it's very difficult to waterproof it. It's a long, thin thing. And also it uses um, a brushed DC motor and a uh, carbon film potentiometer to uh, work out what it's doing. And neither of these are likely to uh, last very long um, on a sea trip. So I've been uh, working on a new rudder servo which will be driven by a worm drive and therefore uh, will be sufficiently strong so that the rudder cannot possibly push it uh, backwards um, under the force of the seawater. And that's what uh, this video is about. flat so I'm going to I need to trim some off the width anyway so I'll try it like this probably not a good idea but there you go Right, final cut of 0.86 millimetres to take it down to um, 72 millimetres width. It's very slightly too large to fit in there, as I've deliberately left it slightly oversized, so that I can pull it off later. So I've milled various blocks of aluminium like this and I'm going to put the gears 
in there. Doesn't look to be much room, does it? <laughs> I hope that's big enough. Um, and what I've got to do now is to drill and tap these so that I can screw it together in a box like that. Well, I think I shall just be able to fit that worm drive in there. Okay. So when I made this, I first made these two holes here, clearance holes for these screws, and remembered exactly how far up, having edge found this edge, I remembered exactly how far up the centre of this hole was and that one. And then I took these blocks and moved up exactly the same distance having, after edge finding this up to here to drill the tapping hole and likewise on this uh, well that's what I did on this side and I discovered that um, there is a slight ledge here so it's not quite at the right height so on this one I used a different technique of putting this in the vise and then transfer punching it and this, that technique, has produced a better result than the DRO. So, um, there you go. I think probably what I should have done is, I've got to do these all the way around the box. I should, I should do all these, not bothering too much about getting them exactly the right place. Then turn the box over and just mill the whole thing flat. That would be a, an easier way of doing it. before it has a chance to move anywhere.
One down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. flat. Well I want to mill some acrylic now so um, I think I better clean up this mess. So at last I've got this gearbox uh, together almost. So that's screwed together like that and it goes on here and will uh, likewise be screwed and then I've got to fit these gears in here, one there and one here, lower down obviously. This is the one point or the these two points here where I haven't got any screws going so that's where the, the um, holes for the bearings and seals will have to go. And then um, I've made the top out of acrylic, um, not because that's a good idea, but because I want to see what's going on. If I, when I've got the gears in here and they're running, uh, and I've got some oil in there, I want to see where the oil is spraying, um, because I've got to have a shaft coming up out through this top, and it's got to have. Um, it's got to have a seal on it and I want that seal to be lubricated from the underside so I thought I'll temporarily make this top of acrylic so that I can see what's going on. What I had intended to do on final assembly is to smear Hylomar which is um, a non-setting jointing compound over the surfaces before screwing them together in the hope that that would make it oil tight but um, this is the first thing that I have made with a reasonable degree of precision using um, you know, edge finders and uh, um, the DRO properly. Um, and I think that the fit may be so good that it won't leak anyway. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'll just screw it all up and put some water in there and see how long, if it, it, see if it um, leaks out. Right, well I'm doing this in the kitchen because of the dehumidifier in the um, workshop. So, put some water in here. It's about half full. And I'll screw all these down. Right, that's screwed down. Um, Nothing coming out yet. I'm just going to leave it there for a day or so, two, and see what happens. I wonder what the surface tension of oil is compared with water, and what determines whether a fluid creeps along small cracks. That's capillary attraction, isn't it? That's, um, can't remember anything about it. Well, I've left it for a day giving it a vigorous shake every time I passed and um, it has uh, not leaked at all not at all no dampness at all on the outside so that's fun well that's interesting I just took the lid off whilst holding the box still there was water on the underside of the lid because I'd shaken the box, but um, it does seem to have penetrated some way.
into the joint, although maybe it did that at the time that I undid it, I don't know. So I emptied the water out and I've just dried the inside with this so there's no visible water there and then I'm going to take this bottom off and see if there's any water in the gap. A little moisture, yes. Nothing that can't be kept up with Heilemar though. Well you may say all you've got so far is an empty box. Um, when I designed this I thought well this box will be way big enough to hold these two gears like that obviously with this one further down but what I wasn't thinking at the time was that I was going to put a whole load of screws through this box to hold it together and I've got and I've got a screw coming up here and a screw going down here and of course I've got a s screw and a side piece here so When the shaft goes in, it's got to fit between those screws. And the same goes for the bearing. Actually, the bearing is slightly bigger. So the bearing has got to go about like that so that it clears the screws and is at the right height. So this is the bit that I've been dreading, is actually cutting the holes for seals, bearings and shafts and getting them in exactly the right place, but I'm going to try that now. Right, so I've got it lined up on the inside of the box here and the bottom of the box here and um, made that zero on the DRO. So now it has to come up 17 millimetres. The interesting thing is when I, when I put the lock on it actually changes the measurement so yeah that's better and it's got to come across 10.95 So that should be exactly where I want this. Well, that's probably about right. It's just a tight fit. I should have made this box bigger. Right. This is a six millimetre shaft and I'm going to drill a six and a half millimetre hole right the way through this and down into the bottom bit but not very far down into the bottom bit just to locate these things before I machine them. Um,
so we then go right down to there. So that's zero and it's just touching. This is a four flute, 14 millimeter end mill. Um, if I put it down onto that and zero it, I've got to go 6.92, I think. No. Yes. 6.92 millimeters is the thickness of the. Uh, shaft seal. So, have we locked everything? Yes, we have. So let's lock the mess. Because I always slightly over, over take everything. Anyway, that will have to do. Alright, so now we switch to the boring bar, which is set to the right diameter. Um, actually, we're not going to do it like that, are we? What we're going to do is bring it down almost onto there and then use the fine feed. Right, there is the hole. And of course, the shaft seal will not go in there because it's designed to be forced in, which is good. So what I'm going to do now is unscrew this piece of metal, turn it over in the vise and uh, bore the other side of it for the bearing and then bore another hole for the bearing in the bottom of this thing. So that is, that is just a 14.9mm hole. I'm going to um, loosen that. Okay, that's on three, so I'm going to take my glasses off. It's on three, so if I make it, that's That's 14.9, no, that's 15. Fifteen point one, fifteen point two, fifteen point three, fifteen point four, 
This should be 15.5. This is not what I want, but it's halfway towards what I want. So we'll try that. It's about 500 RPM. Um, This is just an experimental hole that I'm doing to get the size right. Well, so let's just see what size that is. It should be 15 and a half, shouldn't I? So what is it? No. Don't tell me that's 16. I'm become totally miscounted. This is typical of life in general. How can I have miscounted by so much? That is actually 60. Ah! Because, of course, it's both sides, isn't it, you moron? Yes, OK, so that's exactly right, because it's 16.06. Um, but I've gone too far on that. It's a good thing I did this as an experimental thing only. Because that's going to fit in there quite easily. And we'll never get it out again. All right. Um, so I went twice too far because I forgot that I'm taking um, uh, cutting off both sides of this hole, aren't I? <laughs> so I want to come back. Well, that's 16. I, I'm going to come back two tenths. Well, I've milled this to 14 millimetres, and I'm now going to bore it out to 15.95, which is what this boring bar has been set on. But that means in one go it's going to be taking about 2 millimetres off the outside, which is, or well, maybe 1 millimetre each side. We'll see whether it will do it. So I'll put some uh, WD-40 in it. I think it's quite happy to do that. Of course the bottom of it will not be absolutely flat because the bottom of the tool is great. Probably doesn't matter much to me. I'm going on to a depth of five millimeters. That's okay. So that looks quite clean. Is it 15.95? No. It's awfully difficult measuring holes like this. 15.9899 that's too bit that's too much anyway let's see if the bearing goes in hmm 
Well, that's about right. The bearing won't go in just like that. So that finishes that here with a hole for the shaft seal on the outside here and a hole for the bearing on the inside with a very thin bit of aluminium in between which doesn't matter and we have not actually hit any screw holes in doing this so that's good well, now this is interesting this is the one I did yesterday and uh, this is 15.95 and it's just a very light press fit into that um, whereas this one which I've just done this morning without changing the boring bar at all apart from taking it out of it and removing it from the mill and putting it back in again later um, and this is 16.01 which makes it a loose fit of course I can put some Loctite in there can't I to solve that problem but uh, it's slightly annoying when I'm using the same boring bar without touching it so that, what's that difference it's 0.06 millimeters which is 2.3 thou well, it shouldn't happen, in my opinion, but there you go. It has happened. Well, here's another thing that I haven't thought through carefully enough. Um, we're going to have a bearing going in there, pressed in there, and on the outside we've got a shaft seal which is going to be pressed in there. Now obviously that shaft seal needs lubricating on the back, um, and my thought when I didn't exactly design this but alighted upon this arrangement um, my thought was that there would be sufficient separation between the bearing and the seal for me to be able to drill some kind of diagonal hole through here um, so that oil that's splashing about in the box would get to the back of this this um, seal but at the moment I don't think it will because I've got this small um, lip of metal between the two um, which is less than a, m a millimeter thick and, and doesn't need to be there I could easily drill that out but um, when both of these things are pressed in here there's not going to be significant clearance between the two seems to me well, maybe there will be just a little well half a millimeter is that sufficient to solve the problem another obvious and easy way of doing it would be to change this bearing for an, an open bearing rather than a sealed one and then the oil splashing around will lubricate them both the reason I chose sealed bearings in the first place was because I thought well if the worm, um, if the gears start wearing and we get metal particles in the oil, I don't want them getting into the bearing. So that's why I chose a sealed bearing. Maybe I shall have to switch to an open one. Or maybe I can just put some grease behind this bearing before I, when I press it in and um, just hope that it lasts forever or at least uh, for the life of the uh, boat so I've got this spindle running in the two ball bearings um, like that and the next thing I've got to do is the most difficult thing which is to install this cargon shaft like that um, because this is curved it's got to be at the, exactly the right height but more importantly it's got to be exactly the right separation from this shaft to that one there are formulae for specifying what the separation should be but they require you to know the exact parameters of these gears and I don't know the exact parameters of them so what I'm going to do is, is put them 0.1 millimeters separation and see if that works um, but that means I've got to 
drill the holes for this shaft and bearings very accurately with respect to this shaft. So I've got this in the centre in the X direction and I'm, I'm now going to edge find on this shaft um, in the Y direction. Let's do that again. Yeah, that's exactly right. Good. So that's that. So that, that is actually, because the shaft diameter is 6 millimeters. that's 3 millimeters over that way. <laughs> minus the diameter of the, uh, the minus the radius of, of the uh, edge finder, which I of course have forgotten. I think that's six millimeters as well. Well, I've uh, moved the shaft over by the calculated distance, having regard to the fact that there is six millimeters um, in the radius of the shaft and the radius of the edge finder, and then. I've mounted the gear uh, just temporarily in a drill chuck um, and moved it down to the exact height, the right height, using the z-axis DRO. So the question is, um, it definitely doesn't seem to be rubbing. I can't actually turn this uh, because it's so hard to turn, even though I've disengaged the um, headstock gear, but if I turn, oh, that's right, I just had to get it the right way around. I'm just assisting it in the turning. <laughs> that seems to have a good mesh, but isn't actually catching. That's actually a 0.2 millimetre separation that I decided to use for reasons of safety and because it's so difficult to measure this. I measured the distance across here when the gears were fully meshed, but that was hard, hard to do accurately. I think I'll, I'll go for that and hope for the best. Right, I'm going to drill a 6 millimetre hole, which is the same diameter as the shaft, through the top and down to the bottom of this. smell of hot perspex. I can't centre drill the bottom hole, it'll just have to find its way. Let me just zero the DRO down there because I want this hole to be six millimetres deep. I would suggest that the uh, hole is not quite straight. Six millimetres. Well, I've just put the shaft in temporarily, and it's just as well that I did this because this is definitely too tight. I cannot turn that freely. This is at the right height. Um, 
so it needs to go a bit over that way. Of course I can correct that because I haven't actually drilled the holes for the bearings yet so that I can drill those holes very slightly that way and that we should, should be okay. But how, how much, how far that way, I've got to guess now. Well, it's slightly irritating that this has turned out to be too close because you saw me test it when I put this cog on this chuck um, and it was fine. And now I've drilled a hole using this chuck without moving it and now it's too tight. There is a, a, an important difference between these two. When I was doing the uh, cog in the chuck here, I was actually using this shaft, which is 5.97 millimeters in diameter, whereas this one is uh, six millimeters exactly. Um, so that's 0.03 millimeters difference, but I'm not sure that, that really accounts for it. It's an example of how nothing ever works out quite exactly right in real life, does it, however carefully you do it. I measured this correctly on the DRO. I'm pretty sure it's exactly right. However, the calculated separation was based upon measurements that I made of the separation of the two cogs when they're fully engaged. And that was quite difficult to do. As you can see, I took four measurements and they differed by 0.1 uh, or even point, almost 0.2. And I took the average. But um, maybe that partly accounts for it. it doesn't, but it doesn't really account for it because I tested this position in this chuck and that was OK. One thing that is the case is that The shaft is vertical, and it is in the right place according to the DRO. However, all is not lost because um, I haven't uh, actually cut the holes for the bearings yet, so I can cut these off centre. Um, this is a 6mm end mill, which slides in there correctly, as, as one might expect. So if I find now move the table this way by a magic amount and that's the difficulty is to decide how by how much to move it. I'm going to move it by 0.2 millimeters so that means I want it 12.165 and I, I go over that to 75 because when I turn, tighten up these things it comes back a long way. It's annoying that when I tighten the y-axis that's 12.165 and hopefully I can do with a milling machine what I can't do with a drill which is to drill a hole off centre completely off centre and the bottom one. Well, we've got two slightly oval holes uh, here now, and uh, that's absolutely fine. So, that's where we're going to drill them. That's where we're going to mount the, uh, the bearings. Well, I'm going to try boring this perspex. Probably I should have tried this um, on a scrap piece to start off with, but I'm going to hope for the best and um, maybe use a little cooling water. This is a 300 RPM.
Well, that's made uh, a nice mess, and I forgot to lock the Z axis. I locked, locked the column, which was a mistake. Um, oh, it's made a nice clean hole. So that hole looks okay. Well, I finally got the two gears and four bearings in there. Um, is, <laughs> the top is not supposed to rotate like that. I was going to Loctite the upper bearing into that Perspex slab, but I read the data sheets on various types of Loctite and they all said do not use this on plastic because any unset adhesive is likely to cause stress cracking. Um, Loctite does have an adhesive for plastic called uh, AA330, but I haven't got any of that. So I used ordinary superglue uh, on this uh, job, and um, it has indeed uh, caused stress cracking, as you can see. Um, I showed you earlier a, a picture of the, uh, the hole that I'd bored. Uh, before I put the adhesive in and it was completely clean and uncracked and, and now as soon as I put the adhesive on it cracked like that so uh, one has to take care when gluing things into perspex what I'm going to do now is to put some oil in here Possibly a bit too much. So that's about a third full. And then we can uh, screw that up. I can't remember, but I think this is a 10 to 1 reduction ratio. So um, five turns on this should produce 180 degree turns up here. So let's just test that. One, two, three, four, five, yes. Which is all we need for the rudder. And with this arrangement the um, the worm gear is continuously lubricated. The downside is that we have two shaft seals, one here, probably doesn't make much difference, and one here, which does make a big difference, because these were very um, free-moving before I put the shaft seals in. Well, just to test it a bit. Probably not going to go much faster than that. If I go really fast, Some water is, uh, <laughs> some oil is splashed around. There's plenty of oil on the gearing, but what I actually wanted was oil to be splashed up onto here so that it would get underneath this seal and lubricate this seal. And that's what's not happening. Now, I don't know, don't know what I'm going to do about that. You could treat this seal as being lubricated for life with some oil or grease underneath it.
question is, how long would it last without lubrication of that shaft seal? That's what's worrying me at the moment. But it looks quite nice, that. And then my idea is I can fit it in this waterproof uh, box. Um, and I'd fit a small uh, brushless motor or a stepper motor which would just fit in there. And then this bit, I would have this the other way up, I'd have this upside down. This bit would be sealed to the side of the box with silicone sealant or whatever, so that this seal would be sticking out through a hole. And um, would effectively keep the oil inside and keep the water, any water outside, from getting in to the not only to this but also to the box as a whole. So we only need one seal. Um, that was my thinking. Of course, if if I had two seals, then there'd be again there'd be a problem with lubricating those seals. Um, There's no problem with lubricating this seal because it's uh, exposed to the oil all the time. So that's as far as I've got with this uh, rudder servo project to date. Um, there is a problem with the lubrication of these shaft seals and if anybody has any suggestions on that uh, please do put it in the comments. Um, please don't say why don't you use o-rings because I've started down a certain path and I don't particularly want to backtrack enormously. Um, there is another problem with this design um, which I haven't had time to mention so you'll just have to wait for the next episode to get into that. And in the meantime, thanks very much for watching.